Praise the Lord. So today I'm continuing this, this series um, with uh, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you, which is what Jesus said to us. Yeah. And um, today we're going to be looking at blessed are the pure in heart, just for a few minutes, mm. uh, because we've, the time is far spent. But we can just look at this and just see what it means. So for the last few months, as I said, we have been going through a series called teaching them to observe whatsoever I've commanded you. Yeah. We are currently going through the Beatitudes, which are otherwise known as the Sermon on the Mount, recorded in Matthews 5, 6 and 7, and is also found in Luke 6, 20 to 49. These are essentially moral teachings that stress the importance of genuine devotion to God and the necessity of sincere kindness towards others. Okay, so if we look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, and it simply says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now what does it mean to be blessed? Well, blessed means to be happy. And to be, en to be envied, you know, blessed to be envied, the, the Amplified Bible oftentimes puts it down to be envied. It's something that you are in a situation that other people are looking at and think, well, what's going on with her? You know, because the blessings of the Lord are upon you. You are in a felic felicitous state that you're in a state of happiness and contentment and that is what is available to us as children of God. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. I looked up the word pure and uh, it comes from the Greek word katharos and there's quite a few different definitions but the ones that we're going to look at is to be purified by fire. Uh, it could be like a vine cleansed by pruning and so fitted to bear fruit so in order for a vine to be fitted to bear fruit it has to be cleansed it has to be pruned it has to be cut down so it's purified so all the other bits that are not right are cut away and you're only left with the pure substance um, it means to be uh, sincere or to be genuine to be free from every every admixture of what is false so that, that's another reason for purity. That's another um, definition of purity. It also talks about being blameless or being innocent. Yeah. Unstained with the guilt of anything. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about when we're, talking, we're looking at the word pure. What about the definition of the heart? It says, better are the pure in heart. When Jesus said the pure in heart, did he mean the physical heart or did he mean something else? Well, some of the definitions here again, um, it, means, it comes from the Greek word cardia. And what definitions we're looking at are the center and the seat of spiritual life. The heart is the center of the spiritual life. It's also the soul or the mind. Uh, it is the, the fountain and the seat of the thoughts, the passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes and endeavours. So it's a lot of things here. How man thinks, what you think about, what drives you. It could be talking about that, your appetites, your affections, what you want to do and how you are going about doing it. So it could be taught the heart can be where all of that conception takes place. can also talk about the will and the character. That's another definition of the heart. So your heart could be your will or your character. So that's what Jesus said. Okay, what does it mean to see? He said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. What does it mean to see God? Well, the definition that we've got here uh, means... Um, uh, it comes from the Greek word that means to look at or to behold, uh, to allow oneself to be seen, to appear. And I thought that was quite interesting. When I thought of uh, to allow oneself to be seen, you can, you can remain hidden. Uh, people don't really know you. You could be behind something and you could be obscured. Yeah. But if you allow yourself to be seen, it means that something happens that you reveal mm. yourself. So, so I thought to myself, you know, to see God in this passage could mean to have a revelation yeah. of God. You know, there, there's been a, a, um, a kind of saying that's been said about in, in a lot of traditional churches that, you know, God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Or, you know, God does it. We don't we can't know about who God really is. And, you know, he's a mysterious God. But that's not true. God wants to be known 
to his creation. He wants to have fellowship with us. He wants, he wants to have a relationship with us. Being hidden is not what God wants at all. God doesn't want to be an enigmatic creature that nobody knows how he behaves and what he does and, and we're completely confused about the way in which he operates. That's not true. If we get to know God, we can find out about him. And so this is what I'm saying. And when I looked at some of the, uh, the definitions of the passage, I looked to see scriptures that would kind of bear that out. And I really couldn't find anything that talked about the heart and brought that in. They all sort of, all more or less said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And they just kind of echoed it. So I put together my own little definition. I put my, I became my own translator. <laughs> and, uh, and from the definitions that I gave to you, I came up with this. It says, happy to be envied are those purified by fire who are sincere, blameless and innocent in the soul or mind, the fountain and the seat of the thoughts, passions, desires, appetites and affections, purposes and endeavours for they shall have a revelation of God. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'll say that again for you. Okay. Online, can't we? Well, I'm, I'm sure Pastor Conan will put it on online at some time, but I don't know quite well. So I'll just read that. I'll read my own little definition to you again. Happy to be envied are those purified by fire who are sincere and blameless and innocent in the soul or mind, the fountain and seeds of the thoughts and passions, mm. desires, appetites and affections, purposes or endeavours, for they shall have a revelation of God. Yes. Well, brethren, isn't that what we want? Yes. Don't we want to have a revelation of God? Mm -hmm. Don't we want to know about God, to be with God, to see God and to feel God in our daily lives, to know what God is really all about? Uh, if we turn to 1 John 3, 2 and 3, 2 and 3, yeah, 1 John, no, 1 John 3, verses 2 to 3, that's what I meant to say, 1 John 3, verses 2 to 3. It says, Beloved, now are we the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Uh, this is very interesting because it talks about the revelation of God that we don't know when he is revealed we shall be like him well you know God has created us to be like him uh, there's always there's been a, a talk in the, in the body of Christ that you know God is kind of up there and we are down here and we are miserable creatures we are sinners and we can't do the, we can't be like God. that's not true God created us to be like him. He created us in his image. He created us in his likeness. And when we are born again in our spirits, we are identical to Jesus. Yes. And God loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. Yes. He's not looking to us to do anything for us to love him. He's not looking for us to do anything for us to be like him because we are already like him in our spirits. The only thing is that we are a tripartite being where spirit, soul and body, our bodies were not born again when we were born again. Our souls were not born again when we were born again. Some of the things we, some of us still struggle once we got born again, we did not automatically stop doing the things that we shouldn't do. And we didn't start thinking automatically in a different way. There were some changes with some, but this, it's a work in progress. And this is what the Bible demonstrates, that we have got choices to make. Pastor Conan was talking about choices. We have choices to make as to how we line up our soul life with the spirit man. And in order for us to do that, that, that spirit, soul and body can come into unity and be in harmony one with another. If they are not in harmony, you will have a very hard time as a Christian. There are people who really struggle 
in their Christian life and they struggle not because they don't, they're not born again, it's because they have not lined up the, their, their spirit man with their soul life. Their soul is all over the place. They're doing all kinds of things and they're making some very, very bad choices. But the Bible tells us that if we are pure in heart, if we come to a knowledge of God and we make some better choices and we use the word of God to help us to line up with God's word it means that we will start to drop off the things that we need to drop off and we will start to put on the things that we need to put on Amen. praise the name of the Lord uh, if we look at the so Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it tells us some amazing things here about the word of God Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power yeah. making it active operative and uh, energizing and effective this is the amplified version of this verse and uh, making it active operative energizing and effective it is sharper than any two-edged sword yeah. penetrating to the dividing line of this the breath of life the soul and the immortal spirit and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature mm. exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart praise God the Word of God is able to do that the Word of God reveals to us if there is anything impure in the heart it shows us the condition of our heart sometimes we don't really realize what kind of condition we're in until we start to read the Word of God and the Word of God shows us that our thinking is off our behavior is off our attitudes are off that there are some ways that we have we shouldn't be thinking that way and sometimes you may think that you're pure in one way you find that you're not that pure at all when the word of God starts to expose the inner man of the heart praise the name of the Lord but we are the word of God tells us when we are pure in our heart we go through a process of getting rid of everything that is not innocent you know we we, we don't line up with the wrong attitudes and wrong behavior and side with that because if you side with the wrong, you will become wrong. But we were talking about um, how we went to uh, Ixus Church Council yesterday. And the Archbishop had a very, very great example, a wonderful example that he used in the sermon that he was preaching about a magnet. And he says that with different types of metal, if you rub a magnet against this metal, then it will take on the properties of the magnet and it will start to stick. But he says gold will not do that. Gold is a pure substance. And if you rub gold against a magnet, gold maintains its own character and it does not take on the character of the magnet. And what he was saying is that we as children of God, we have to be like God and we need to have the attitude and the character of the Lord God Almighty and not take on the attitude of the world if you rub yourself off against uh, uh, rubbish or, or impure substances you can become impure you can start to speak in an impure way you can start to behave in an impure way because you are taking on the characteristics of something else that's impure because you have not maintained your own character but we are saying today that in order for us to have a revelation of God you need to be pure you need to align yourself with the Lord God Almighty and then we can see God and we can come into the character our character will change to the degree that we line ourselves up with God and not with things that are impure you don't speak the same thing that people are impure you don't echo it <laughs> Glory be to God. Some of God's people are echoing the world because they're making wrong choices about who they are allowing to influence them. But I'm saying today, we need to be pure. We need to be set aside. 
Holiness means that you are set aside. We've been hearing Pastor Colin preach a wonderful message going through Christian formation about the kind of behavior that we should have and how we should line ourselves up. We need to separate ourselves from that which is impure so that we don't take on that characteristic. But also, by the same total, we weren't born pure, so we need to drop it off. But the more we align ourselves with the Word of God, we will see where the deficiency are and to the degree that we say I'm not going to be like this anymore I'm not going to do this anymore I'm going to make different choices purity will come we will drop off those things that are not pure we will it will separate itself from us we will line ourselves up more with the character of God Oh, praise. We start to think like God. I'm telling you, the more that you spend time in somebody's company, you start to think like them. You start to echo them. You speak like them. Isn't it the truth? <laughs> you spend a lot of time in that, but the sayings that person says, you start saying those kind of things. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, let me just quick before I go. There was a, uh, there's a, yeah, uh, let, me, let me say Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar uh, has some of his teachings of change um, recently. He's coming uh, very much with the grace um, message and he's talking about the grace of God in a way that he didn't used to do before because he's had a, a new revelation of it. But when I've heard him say something, I said to myself, you know, he sounds very much like Andrew Womack. I said a lot of the things he said, it, it could, it's tough, tough. You know, very, very much Andrew Womack said. I said, he's been listening to Andrew Womack because I can tell that because I listen to Andrew Womack and what I've heard Crefler coming out, I said, he says, he's, there has some, something has happened that Creflo Dollar sounds very much like Andrew Womack. Well, I was listening to Andrew Womack more recently and he was saying, well, I went by Crefler the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that they have been inviting each other to each other's meetings. Uh, so Creflo has been teaching in some of Andrew's schools. Uh, Andrew has been invited to, uh, to Creflo Dollar's church. They are now doing conferences. They're doing conferences together. I take, uh, you take my point. Once you start to spend a lot of time with somebody listening to them, you start to speak. Once you agree with what they're saying, you start to say what they say. And in some cases, you can barely tell them apart. Uh, and so that's how we need to be. We need to be like that when it comes to God. We need to be purified from everything that is is unlike God and that we can line up with God, have a revelation of God and allow God to be seen through us. God bless you. Amen.